All right, so this is just a quick video to show how I made a website called The Best Color Is. It's very simple. Um, it's got two parts to it. One is a HTML form with a simple color input. So we can change the color. We can add an optional comment and name. Green is the best. And then we can just say a non green and then click submit. Um, you can see here that I have two browsing sessions. So one is for Chrome, another one is for Firefox. And the update was actually sent to the other Firefox browser as well. And we're doing all of that with server sent events. So any clients um, on this server, uh, they will get the update in real time, which is pretty cool. And then it's just gonna change the theme colors of the website. Um, the second component of it is we are taking the IP address of the client and then translating that into a geolocation record. So we're getting the city, the state, and the country. And then we're also tracking um, the number of votes. And on this page, you can see all the times that the color has been voted on, it shows you the number of records, and we just have a little paginated table. So I actually took this idea from a Reddit post. Um, where you can set the best color on a website um, and then it'll stay that way until someone else changes it. Um, so this is the website of the original idea. So all credit goes to uh, this user. Um, the reason I made this is because I thought it was a really cool idea. And at the time, um, the website got taken down for whatever reason, but now it's back up. So I did still wanna make the video um, and just go over how the different pieces work. Okay, so we're going to start looking at some of the code. Um, this is the home page, and I think I just want to start here showing the way that the post request works. So we're just, you know, getting some form data right. Uh, we're creating a record in the database. And then normally this is where you would get the IP address with this Remix Utils library. So I could not get this to work. If you know how it works, definitely please leave a comment and tell me how it works. Um, because for like whatever reason, I just could not get it to um, get the IP address. I think it always sent back is null. So I'm definitely doing something wrong there. But anyway, so it makes a simple post request and then we're using this IP API website. So we can probably just pull this up real quick. And then this right here, I just saw that um, it was free. We're not using it for commercial use at all, right? And then I didn't need an API key. So that was kind of all that went into my decision making for it. And you can see that the API for it is just insanely easy. Yeah, you can go up here and then just click what you want to include, right? Okay, yeah, and then it gives you this generated numeric. And you can just copy and paste that in there. Um, so what we're doing is we're just seeing, you know, if it, we get rate limited or whatever, it's a very simple check. It's not going to do a job or anything complicated. Try to retry a request. We'll just let it fail. Then we create a geolocation record um, that just has, you know, some metadata about the location. Um, and then again, if that fails, then we just give some information about an error. Um, and then here at the very end, this is uh, what is... This is what is like streaming the updates so that all the clients um, are getting that update of the background color switching. So like when you click this right and then you click submit and it changes the background, that piece of code is why it gets updated everywhere, um, why every client gets the update. So... We can do emitter. So right here we have emitter.server. Um, this is just basically like this like remember class is just like a singleton. So we're just making sure that only one is created um, ever. And then we have this event emitter uh, class. I believe this is just, cause I actually stole that code from some like YouTube video I watched. I think I have it documented. Oh, okay, so this is a Node.js package. Um, but anyway, so I stole this from, let's see if I have it somewhere. Yes, yeah, so you can like look at the source code for this. There's like a YouTube video, I believe, on this GitHub page. Yeah, and this will go over. This will explain it much better than I ever will, the server sent events. 
and you can read more about that here. Um, but yeah, it's basically just um, sending out the updates to all the clients for a particular um, that are subscribed to a particular server. Okay, so uh, the main thing to note is we're just emitting an event. Um, this is an event emitter object, right? Um, and then after we're doing that, we are using the emitter. So we're registering. In, so with the emitter class, we're registering the listener. Whenever we send an event, um, it's going to be registered by this handle. Um, so then let's just send some data and then it just like all that's in the data is just saying um, when the update occurred. So just a very simple timestamp. Uh, and then we have a cleanup function to just remove it whenever uh, we're done. So event stream, again, this is just like a utility class from Remix. And then right here, I have a loader function. So this is actually under the stream endpoint right here. So I, I don't think it's gonna do anything here. Um, and I'm not sure if it should or not. Um, I believe it does in that tutorial video, but I didn't spend too much time trying to get that to work. Uh, but basically this is on the stream route, right? And then we're just sending in the request and then we register it with an event name. So um, that gets sent here. And then this use live loader hook. So this is a util that we have. Um, it's using the event source. So this is just another um, helper library from Remix Utils. And then what it's basically going to do is every single time that the um, data changes, we're going to revalidate using a, another function. Um, and this is another utility from Remix. It's going to revalidate. And what revalidate is going to do is just run the loader again. Um, and then we are going to... So that will cause the loader to rerun. So they're going to send the... Um, they're going to submit the form right and then the loader or then the action is going to say like, hey, revalidate this data and then the loader is going to rerun, which is right here. So then we're just going to get the latest vote. And that's, you know, the simple query we need to do just to update the color um, because the background of the application is always just going to be set to whatever the color is. So we need to actually get the IP address here and I'm just sending it in the form data. I'm using a separate API to get the IP address because I could not get that utility function, get client IP address to work. So if we go down here, you can see we have api.ipify.org. All right, so we'll click this. And then um, the main reason I chose this is just because it is super easy, it's free, and there was no API key I had to dude like there's no setup right so you can just see right here you can use it without limit so i don't have to worry about rate limiting um so it's super easy um and ideally you'd want to do this on the server um but if you do this on the server then it's always going to just trace whatever the um ip address is of the machine uh that's running the website so for instance uh if this was server side it would always be you know like 193 because you know maybe my server is running in Toronto somewhere or I don't know what a good example is uh Texas I don't know um you know like my IP would always be the exact same IP address and what I want it to actually be is the client IP address so it should always be dynamic based on who is on the website so we've got that there. This sets the IP address um, and then it gets sent into the form. But ideally what I would want it to do is uh, I'll be done here, right? So we just get the IP address based off of the request sent from the client. So if you know how to do this, I mean, please tell me how to do it because um, I am not some savant at coding or anything uh, of the sort. I just think that Stuff like like information like this is like pretty useful. Um, just and and it's just cool to see how people built something and just kind of go over um, how you built it. Because a lot of it uh, for websites that you see, you know, it might not be open source, but um, all the stuff that I build, it will be open source. 
I should say it should be public. <laughs> I don't think anyone's going to, you know, like try to build on top of it because it's just like useless stuff. And then the other thing is just the vote. So this is just literally a simple table. And then we've got um, a bunch of pagination controls. Yeah. So I don't think really anything to note there. Um, I did rip this pagination component from a blog post. I've I've done pagination by myself in the past, but it's like, why even do it anymore when there's just like components libraries for it as long as they're lightweight right like i wouldn't reach for like material ui to do it but um this was simple enough to where i was like okay i might as well just you know add this in there and then we've got some page buttons that's pretty easy and the code's not too bad because uh, i don't like to really re reach for the libraries too often unless i need to um big fan of headless ui actually um, and Tailwind is actually going to, what, what is that thing that they did? Catalyst. Yeah. So I was actually considering buying Tailwind Pro or whatever the hell it is. It was like $350 just so I could try this out. But I was like, okay, that'd be super dumb to do that. Cause this is actually blocked behind, um, a paywall right now. And they don't have a ton of components, but I mean, it's just kind of cool to, have extremely lightweight component libraries that do so many specific things where you just need the functionality, right? Like you don't want something like material UI where they just customize it, you know, to, to the end of time. And you're just stuck there on like trying to figure out how everything works at work. I do use this shad CN thing quite a bit though. Um, and that's what everyone on my team likes. It, I mean, it is cool. This is this is a great library to use as well. Component library. Do they have pagination? Okay, yeah. So they just added this. That's the only reason I didn't use this component library for pagination. Yeah. See, they even have the ellipses. These, um, yeah, the the little trailing dots here, which is beautiful. But anyway, so that just goes over how the website works. Uh, to keep this video short, I think I'll just stop it there, right? Um, I'll put a link to um, the code in the website. And then I do want to go over how this is like deployed on render, which is really cool. And the in a follow up video and then just how the dev environment works um, with like Docker and stuff. So, all right, that's I think that's it later.